What's up everybody and welcome back to another episode and today we have a very, very interesting episode. I would say special, but a lot of people do it, but it's special regardless. And today we are talking about my experience at Full Sail University. And uh, just to give a background of my history and what I did specifically at Full Sail, clearly if you know this channel, it's filmmaking. But I got my master's in film production at Full Sail. I didn't do the bachelor's program, so I can't really do a official review, though I've heard great things about it and working with a lot of bachelor students and my time, nothing but really good like feedback from it. So yeah, just to add on to the brief description, I graduated from Full Sail in June 2018. June or July, I forget one of those two. I think it's June. Yeah, June. And uh, so if you know anything about the program, it was still at the beginning stages. I know it has improved a lot and I don't really know exactly what's going on with it. I kind of like shied away from all that, you know, now that I'm gone. But I did hear, you know, in the first couple years, they approved a lot of stuff. So take that into consideration. But yeah, so what I'm gonna do is just the simple, easy pros and cons. I have four each, and we're gonna start with the cons. That way we can just get it going. All right, so I know most people don't stick around super long, so I wanna make sure this specific point was brought up first. That way it hits home and everyone can take it in and realize this is the most important con about Full Sail. So when you go to Full Sail, you get the big name, you hear all the you know big film productions that people have went on to do. And you know, I know a lot of people who have done Marvel, big feature films, all that stuff, and that's cool. But what you gotta realize is when you go to Full Sail, you are not gonna be handed a job when you finish. Just because you hear those stories doesn't mean they just showed up to class, did the bare minimum, and walked out with a big production job. They busted their ass, they connected with so many people, and they were patient. That's the most important thing, is they were patient. They didn't, they didn't just graduate and get handed a job, and that's what a lot of people assume. That's what a lot of people talk shit about the school. And <clears throat> it's, it's a tough one because you think, you know, you got the name and the name does help. Don't get me wrong. Like I've gotten some work just from my, you know, from the full sale name being under there, but I didn't get that interview just cause of it. I had connections with people I went to school with. So if that makes sense. All right, the next one. And I mean, it's common because you're going to college. So it's expected. But I know a lot of people who go get a master's degree, you know, they're working, they got families maybe, maybe they decided to go back to school and all that. But when you're doing this master's of film production, say bye bye to your free time. Like it's a, it's five days of classes usually. So, you know, some vary. And then you also work on productions. Um, you make your own productions, so I guess double productions. You have schoolwork you gotta do outside of class, and then just anything involving it. Like, it's a full-time job. Like, it's a full, like, 50, 60 hour, like, work week type of job. So, I know people can swing it, and I've had friends swing, like, part-time jobs while they were doing it, so, it's possible, but if I was to give any advice on if you wanted to make money, make make it like a, a freelance job of like filmmaking. That way you're learning, you can bring in your classmates to help out, just don't tell them you're getting paid. Or if you make enough money to pay them, sure, that's even better. But that's my piece of advice, is like get ready to just kiss all your free time goodbye. All right, so this one is a personal experience versus like a common thing that I see throughout, you know, the Full sale like organization and all the community for it. This one just happened to me and I've heard it here and there from other people. So it's a, it is a common trait, but it's not as common as the other two. So this is 
Professors tend to have favorites and play towards the favorites. So when I was in full sale and I was kind of coming towards the end of my, you know, year of my program, you know, I'm about to graduate. I noticed that I was, I was having trouble with a few things, you know, with, you know, my career and my skill set. And I kept hearing professors wanting to do, you know, they were doing um, internships kind of for, you know, graduated students to come in, learn even more in depth, you know, learn specifically from one of the professors in that field of, you know, film production. So for example, you know, Bill was the sound guy, you know, so he would, you know, he took in a, uh, an intern to learn sound. So Bill, you know, taught them, helped them work with class, the classes when they're doing sound production, all that stuff. There was like other things like cinematography, you know, uh, grip and electric, all that good stuff. <clears throat> so I noticed I was lacking in a few areas of cinematography when I, you know, first got out. Like, I mean, I still can improve now. So it, that's, you know, that's how it is. But I wanted to step up my game. I didn't feel like I was ready to pursue, you know, a cinematographer, you know, career. I mean, I did, but like, I didn't, I didn't feel like I was ready to like just jump in and do big stuff. I wanted to learn even more. So a couple months before graduation, I was asking around from professors, you know, hey, you happen to have any, you know, internship spots for me? I would really like to learn how to you, yada, 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 all that stuff. Um, so I asked one professor, um, he, he didn't shoot me down and say no, which I wish he kind of would have just done. I wish he would have just been like, hey man, I can't do it. Sorry, which would have been cool. You know, I can take no for an answer. But instead he just ignored it. And I asked him twice and I got the hint after the second time was like, hey, he's not interested. Let me just move on. And that could have been his way of saying no, but I don't know, it didn't, it rubbed me the wrong way. And I have good, you know, instinct on shit. So I was like, all right, you know, he's clearly not interested in me. And, <clears throat> you know, I always notice he kind of played favorites towards other people, which, you know, it is what it is. And I'm sure if you ever watch this, he would be like, oh, no, dude. But okay, it is what it is. So I asked another professor, and I didn't even ask twice. Like, it was like, it is what it is. So I asked this professor roughly the same thing. Like, he didn't say no, but he didn't say yes. He just kind of like brushed it off as something. And I think he may have taken somebody else. I don't know. My memory's a little foggy on that end. So, you know, and just throughout the whole year, I noticed they would all play favorites towards like a specific, you know, group of people and kind of, and that's just how life is, you know, sometimes you just got to go out and do it, but that's another point that I'm going to cover. So I want to stop it right there. All right. So this is my last con and this is, you know, four and done. We're good. And this is a sad, but truthful thing. And hopefully they can really work on fixing this. Cause I think this is the most fixable, um, aspect of things is um it's just too short of a program you know it's just a year you know I get you gotta you want to get in and out but they either have to figure out like hey we can't just accept students from other degrees like that have no film experience or we need to expand it because I noticed a lot of students that would come in with no experience at all you know first half of the year they're just trying to figure things out you know figure out what they like you know, try different, you know, positions, get some experience. And then they would start niching off towards, you know, the back end of the year, but that's just not enough time to like really learn and grasp and expand to a point where they can go out and find a job outside, you know, once they graduate. All right, time for the best part, the pros. This is, you know, don't let any of the cons, you know, make you go, oh, I'm not going to full sale because the pros, will persuade you right back. Shh, maybe. 
But yeah, so the first pro is you get to work with official studio equipment. The, every month there's a thesis film. And even if it's your, not your thesis you know, that you're working on for your class, you, they still need help. So they're gonna bring in lower month class or even higher month class to come in and help out. So, what was it? Month four, I believe for me, I got really my first taste of uh, the thesis, you know, big production, you know, sets. And I got to work with grip and electric sound. And then about month five and six and on, I was, you know, I got to touch my hands on, on the camera equipment and work with the camera team, which was super cool. And so I got to work with, you know, big Sony cinema cameras, you know, Ari lights, um, Sennheiser sound, you know, or Sennheiser mics and all that good stuff. So, and I know if my memory is correct, Full Sail got reds and I know they have Alexas. So you get to get your hands on a lot of good stuff. I did get my hand on Alexa. That's, that was a good one. That was a great like learning experience that helped me in the future. So you really do get to like work with, you know, the latest and greatest stuff. So this pro is what made me, you know, stand out and get attention to my work and help me with future jobs was you get to create your own work. You know, you have your classwork that you got to do, but there's still time to create your own projects and students are very ambitious on making sure that they create their own projects. Sure. I didn't really care about writing per se or directing, but I had my own lighting equipment, my own camera. I think I had the Sony a7S II back when it was really big and popping. And I had cinema lenses that I paid for because I was freelancing prior. So it made me stand out and I was able to, you know, create my own projects or help others create their projects and be the cinematographer. And I believe I worked on 22 films in a year. And even then I still didn't feel like I did a lot, but apparently I worked on a lot. So that's the best part is you get this opportunity to create your own stuff, which you're going to be able to add to portfolio, add to your reels. It'll help you stand out when it's time to go find a job. And I think that's a big pro to this whole like, you know, program. I know I said that the last one was the most important which I said before that the other one was most important, but this is also one of the most important. It is you get to make connections, make the connections. There's people that you, you're going to work with on the higher end that work there that can help you either learn and improve your skill set, help you with future work, you know, bring you on to their sets. There's just so many connections and you never know who you're going to meet in class. Whether it's, you know, a couple classes above you, a couple classes below you, you can meet somebody that can help change your life. So here's a great example. So my first big job coming out of school, it took me a while to get it, but it was through a connection. So I got a job with the uh, company Siemens Engineering. Yeah, I know Siemens, right? <laughs> but I didn't get that job because they found me and they were like, hey, you're a good filmmaker. I had a former classmate that worked there and they let go of some people and they were looking for more videographers and she contacted me and another classmate of mine and you know we were able to get the job there. That allowed me to make more money so I could buy more equipment, I can work on more projects, improve my skill set and that you know propelled me to doing a lot of freelance work on the side which, you know, now, you know, we, we're getting some good views and everything is going great. And even though the pandemic, you know, did what it did, because I had that job and I applied for another job that's even better, I was able to get it because they saw I had that job. I worked there for a year and a half and I went, you know, Full Sail did that and I had all these connections and so it's basically leveling up. So make sure you make those connections. All right, guys. So that was it. I know it was a little quick. I was just trying to, you know, make my points short and sweet, make this video a little shorter. 
And uh, I know I'll be doing a podcast potentially in the near future where I'll go more in depth about these parts and like just my experience at Full Sail. So I'll keep you updated on that. Um, but thanks for, you know, stopping by and watching this. I really appreciate it, man. Um, make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you subscribe, you know, all, the, all that jazz. And uh, hope you guys have a good one. And I'll see you next video.